Yo, what is going on guys? Crypto Vibes here, also known as Crypto. Bring you guys another video, and today guys, today, we're getting to weeks, week, <laughs> weeks, week six of the UPC, how season two, and um, yeah, we're going up against Lunar and his uh, team Illusionist, so it's definitely going to be a fun game for sure. He's got a ton of offensive threats, it seems like the main theme of this league so far, just all oh, these broken mons, so yeah, um, so far Lunar's struggling right now, he is currently 0-5, um, but uh, that does not mean for me to put my uh, or take my foot off the gas pedal, uh, or gas pedal at all. But just because um, I had lost two weeks ago and I don't want to lose, I want to try to go the rest of the season and winning, winning out if I can. Uh, I know this team's capable of doing it, so that's the plan here. Uh, but anyways, getting to the teams. On my side of the board, we have Kyogre, Magir Z Move, Magirna, Tornadus, Therian, Reuniclus, Amoongus, Kabutops, Licky Licky, Miss Magius, Z Move, Landorus, Therian, Dredagon, Meowstic, and Hitmonlee. And on Lunar's side, he has the Z Kiram White, Z Landorus Eye, Maleswine, Arcanine, Swellow, Empoleon, Zoroark, Lorantis, Mega Altaria, Cresselia, Alone Raichu, and Talonflame. So you guys might have noticed that uh, if you watched from last week that we had Hitmon top, and this week we have Hitmonlee. So uh, what me and Tsumami did basically is we uh, just exchanged them. Basically, um, he felt he offered me the trade actually for Hitmon top. He thought it fit his needs a little bit better, and I kind of looked at it for a little bit. Uh, I like having Hitmonlee. It's put, it gives me another potential win con in a lot of games. Hitmonlee's overall it hits really, really hard. Uh, Burden's obviously disgusting. Um, it's a spinner as well as um, top. It's a little bit faster spinner, so I can get. I wouldn't say more reliable spins off, but. Um, might come in more crucial situations if I ever needed to spin against a faster Pokemon, for example. But yeah, um, that's basically the idea there behind the trade. And um, yeah, basically looking at um, Lunar's team, a couple things that scare me are the first Pokemon, obviously, the Kyurem White and Lander's Eye are both his Z users. So uh, something I need to be careful with is Lander's Eye that hopefully I don't taste my own medicine and have to deal with a Double Dance Lander's uh, this season because um, Lander's Eye can do that as well, Rock Polish SD and whatnot. And then he does have the Z Crystal on that too, so very, very terrifying stuff there. Um, and then he's got the Mammal Swine. I never, I never like playing against Mammal Swine or Pillow Swine. It's just not fun. Although I do have a pretty good check, and I have a, I have a pretty good decent checks. Being uh, things on my team like Kyogre and Reuniclus are actually pretty decent to come in on that. So that's nice there at least. Arcanine definitely don't think Arcanine's coming against a rain team like this. Uh, he's got a Swellow, which can hit really hard against my team outside of like. Um, I mean, I guess it hits it really overall pretty hard, so there's nothing I can really do much about that. If he wants to run sca Scrappy for my Miss Magius, he can do that. Um, Empoleon, I actually helped him pick up Empoleon a couple weeks back, and um, it actually has a pretty good matchup against my team, so not really appreciate, not really liking what I did back there, but it did help him out. He didn't have a better defugger, so I was down, I was down helping for that. Um, he does have the Zoroark, which is annoying to play around, but I think I can do it. Uh, Lorantis maybe will come maybe it's got the mega altaria that's definitely a threat if i let it set up but i think i can deal with it um Cresselia is definitely a mon i prepped around a lot this this week as it was one of the better mons on paper against my team in my opinion he's got the alone raichu um it can just spam thunders he might run like scarfed alone raichu or even specs and then he's got talent at the bottom which i don't really see coming but if it does it definitely can put in a little bit of work so i need to be careful for that uh, but anyways, I need to get back to the beginning of my squad. Um, starting off on the team, we are bringing Reuniclus, the splurge here with the red card actually. So we have Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, Recover, and Focus Blast. The idea behind the red card is if he brings Calm Mind, Cresselia, which is what he's brought every single time he's brought Cresselia. I've looked back at the replays. That's what he's decided to do. And if he wants to set up a Calm Mind on another one of my Pokemon, I'm going to switch right into Reuniclus. Even if I'm two Calm Minds behind him, I can take a, I can take what would be his best move to hit me would be Shadow Ball. Uh, it would do about 40%. It would red card him out into the worst thing possible would be the Zorvark. If it red cards him out to anything else, I'm pretty sure after a Calm Mind, I can just recover off on anything else, which is really, really nice. And then at least nab a kill or potentially two with this set. Um, it's a really good potential win con late game. It's a good switch into Mammoth Swine if I need to need to be. Uh, it's a good switch into... Um, what else is it a good switch into? Uh, Arcanine if he brings it. Uh, I can come in on Empoleon, I guess. It doesn't really... It can kind of set up on Bullion, I guess, but like the main idea of like with the red card is to come in on Cresselia because I want to be able to get as high as I can on setup as possible. And the EV spread, basically the Spadef right there is, I believe if I get to plus two, I can take on a Life Orb, Zoroark's uh, Dark Pulses. I can take two. That might be Choice Scarf, uh, Zoroark though, but uh, don't quote me on that for sure. But uh, that's the idea right there. And then I threw the rest in defense to kind of just deal with things like Mammoth Swine better. And that's why I went bold, so... Uh, get into my next mod. We are bringing the Tornado Therian Life Orb this week. Uh, really, really good set uh, this week for with Hurricane Knockoff Ton U Turn. Uh, run enough speed for their low and Raichu. Cannot outspeed the Swallow or Talonflame. Um, 
unless I really like Scarfed, which I'm not willing to do this week. Uh, but Hurricane's really nice, obviously. On this mod, Knockoff's really good for things like the Alone Raichu, Cresselia, um, really anything in general. Kind of, kind of scout out what the item is on anything on something. Um, I do have the Taunt on deck, so I can if um, I don't feel like a Reuniclus is in a situation to switch in on Cresselia, I can taunt the Cresselia with this at least, and then I can knock off and proceed to just get damage off on it, see what it wants to do to me, figure out what its set is, uh, and deal with it from there. Um, I believe this attack investment is to make sure I can Oko. It's, it gives me a really good chance to Oko alone when Raichu's with U-Turn. So if he ever wants to stay in on me and say he's like Scarf Thunderbolt, I can live that and I can fire back with a U-Turn, knock him out, get regenerate health. I'm uh, going to get some regenerate health. I can live the Thunderbolt plus Life Orb. If he runs Thunder, which would make more sense, Thunder plus Life Orb does knock me out. So that would be a little bit unfortunate there. But that's his, that's if he's Choice Scarfed. Maybe like Choice Scarf Thunder, but uh, that's something he could do. Uh, get into my next mod. We are bringing the main rain sitter himself. Uh, your kryptonite and with the choice scarf this week. Choice scarf set is just so broken in this league, it seems like. Uh, with water spout, thunder, origin pulse, and ice beam. Uh, basically, if you don't have a really good water type or a um, just a really good like assault vest user, especially defensive mod, then this Pokemon is going to give you trouble. Unfortunately for me, he did pick up the Empoleon, which I helped him with. So uh, that is a pretty good switch into this, unless I am able to lock myself in the thunder comfortably. That's something I want to try to do. Uh, Origin Pulse is there if I ever get weakened, Water Pulse isn't going to be doing much, and then Ice Beam is decent coverage overall to hit things like um, the Mega Altaria, it's the Lavrantis, uh, Lando Eye if I'm ever, I, I guess Lando Eye dropped the Origin Pulse in most scenarios, and then it gives me something to hit Kiram White neutrally if I never need to pick it off or something, so that's that with uh, Kiram, or not Kiram, but with um, the Kyogre, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's what I bring a lot, but uh, and then the speed is for, I believe, some a base 80 he might have on his team. The max is at 284. I'm not thinking. Oh, Mammal Swine. If he brings like a Life Orb Mammal Swine, that'd be something I want to outspeed. Or a Choice Scarf Mammal Swine. That'd be something I want to outspeed. Um, and yeah, get into my next one. We are bringing Landers Eye. I have to bring in Dual Dance. Um, what was it last week? Yeah, after bringing Dual Dance last week and end up losing, I was not comfortable enough bringing it this week as he did have two Ice types that both get Ice coverage, obviously. And then Mammal Swine getting Ice Shard. And then just a ton of stuff that gives this Pokemon problems. Honestly, Landorus doesn't even have a very good matchup this week. Uh, I just really need rocks because this team is really weak to rocks. And my only my other options are Kabutops and Dreadagon, which have even worse matchups, surprisingly. So uh, this is the idea here. Even with the Yachi Bear, we cannot take an Ice Beam from Kieran White, which is unfortunate. I didn't want to throw all the Spadef I had. I didn't want to throw all the EVs I had in Spadef just because I needed them in certain areas. And then uh, Yachi Bear allows me to get up rocks on the Mammal Swan, which is at least nice. I can kind of see... Um, more than likely he's going to be faster than me, even if he's not Choice Scarf, so I wasn't willing to put enough speed into creeping like a Life Orb set. I didn't feel like doing that. Uh, we are carrying U-Turn to uh, get momentum on things like a Long Raichu later in game, potentially. Even though I don't expect this mod to stay around too long, the plan is just to get up rocks, maybe Toxic something, or maybe, you know, switch and intimidate something later in the game. That's kind of the plan with Landers. Uh, not great this matchup, but like I said, rocks are important. Uh, next mod we are bringing, the reason I didn't want to bring rocks on this mod is because it's so freaking good offensively. So we are bringing some Mommy's Boy that can do tops with Life Orb, uh, Waterfall, Stone Edge, Swords Dance, and Earth, or X Scissor. Um, plus two X Scissor can allow me to, I believe, Oko? It's either, yeah, the plus two X Scissor allows me to, it gives me a really good chance to Oko because I sets, I believe, which is really strong. So, um, yeah, we had to go Jolly, I believe, in case he was running what was it something set up speed maybe i don't remember exactly the speed for i'm catching a blank right now i don't know why i don't know why but this was the speed we decided to go with in the rain but yeah overall we are max attack with that and this one just breaks a lot of holes like i said his team's overall is really weak to stealth rock so he's gonna be weak to rock type in general so stone edge, stone edge really nice there for general stab as well as waterfall and then x scissor from stuff like Cresselia does a little bit more than things like waterfall and stone edge we do at plus two so that's the general idea behind that. And then getting to the last mod, the new member of the team, we are bringing Sketchy back. <laughs> with the normal gym, we're going with the basic set with Fake Out, High Jump Kick, Knockoff, and Poison Jab. Uh, he does have a few things that stand in this thing's way. The Mega Altaria still doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't really mind taking a Poison Jab. And um, Arcanine would be annoying for this mod, but like I said, Arcanine has such a piss poor matchup, I don't ex expect to see that coming. Uh, Cresselia can take hits from this thing, but like I said, I have ways of dealing with Cresselia beforehand. And then I guess, um, what else? If he brings like a talent flame and he's, um, what is it? What's that ability? You know that ability I'm thinking of, Gale Wings, yes. So if he's still a fool, then uh, he could still buy, he could buy me with a Brave Bird basically. But 
other than that, this Mon goes in. High Jump Kick hits a lot. Knock Off and Poison Jump overall pretty nice. So that's the idea there. That's going to be the team, guys. Um, I'll go ahead and get into the battle itself. Alrighty, guys. We are back in the battle. And as you guys can see, he did bring the Curum White, uh, Swallow, Napoleon, Mamoswine, Talonflame, and Landorus Eye. So really, really interested to see the Swallow and Talonflame overall. I didn't think they were the greatest brings, but... Uh, they are pretty scary offensively nonetheless, and I do need to play around those appropriately. Uh, right here, I did say I wanted to lead my um, Tornadus to kind of deal with potential Cresselia leads or whatnot, but he doesn't even bring the Cresselia, so <laughs> my Reuniclus set is going to be kind of kind of annoying for me, actually, because um, I wouldn't say annoying, but once something hits me, he'll just get red carded out, so it's pretty annoying for him still, so uh, we'll see what we can do with it. Anyways, I'm going to leave my Kyogre right here. It matches up really well against anything outside the Kyurem White and Empoleon. Um, but as you guys can see, I do lead the Calgary as you lead the Empoleon. I'm just going to fire off a Thunder right here, see if he wants to stay in or not. Uh, I do get a huge chunk off him. I do fully, par I do get him paralyzed right there. He shows the Grass Knot, which is uh, nice. does a ton to me, actually. And uh, right here, I'm definitely expecting him to want to keep his Empoleon around. Um, just because it can still take a hit from Reuniclus outside of Focus Blast. Um, keeping his, and if he has a really, really strong feeling, I'm locked into the Thunder. There's really no reason for him to... Uh, stay in he can keep this mod a sack fodder anyways and he does have a mammoth on the back and i do expect him to bring in something along those lines whether it's mammoth swine or cure him uh, if it was cure him that could have been really bad actually because i don't live even with the yachi like i was saying but right here i can live with the yachi you're going to see yachi or the icicle crash does a ton to me i believe that's even banded damage right there which is pretty good to point out uh it gives me an idea that um my uh what else it gives me an idea that my tornadoes can outspeed it it gives me an idea that my yeah basically my tornadoes that's about it it gives me an idea my my tornadoes can outspeed it still and do anything to it and obviously ice shards can be annoying but uh, i do get my rocks up i'm gonna say this is sack fodder in the back i knew he's gonna go for ice crash right there we're done about 40 percent even if he's banded um so that would have that would have sucked if he hit it right there but unfortunately for him he does miss so it still sucks in a sense but for him uh, more or less and right here i believe i just throw up a waterfall um, not one of SD in this thing's face, so I am lifeable right there as you guys can see. I'm going to knock him straight out, he does, he does just stand. He's going to go into Empoleon, I actually cannot knock this thing out from where I'm at right here. Uh, I could have SD'd I guess, but I am out of the rain right now, so in case you want to go for Grass Knot right away, I just wanted to preserve this because it still does have a really good matchup. I'm going to go into Torn right here as he defugs, so annoying for me, but um, good bring on his part. He does bring out the talent flame, I knock off right there. And right here, I can just click Hurricane. I can knock him out. Even if he's banded, he can't kill me unless he crits me. So, uh, down goes Torn to the crit Brave Bird, unfortunately. But it uh, does put him in position where I can just come in with him only and click Fake Out. Uh, I did have a strong feeling he would just switch out right here. But I'm just going to click Fake Out anyways. As he goes into Land of Eye, which actually checks all my moves really nicely. So, I have to switch out, unfortunately. I'm going to sack my Landorus. I get Intimidate off just in case he's physical. But he is special. You're going to see from the Psychic. I can bring in my Kyogre now, um, which is nice. What was it? What was it? Did you see Life Orb? Why did I bring in my Kyogre? Let me check something. Why did I bring in my Kyogre? He could have been potentially Scarfed. I don't know. That might have been a really bad play on my part then. If he was just potentially Scarfed. So, um, yeah, he wasn't Life Orb or anything. That was, uh, yeah, I mean, he could have been Sheer Force Life Orb, I guess. That's probably what he was, but nonetheless, that was kind of a bad play on my part because he could have been locked, choice locked in a psych psychic right there and knocked me out, but I'm going to knock him out the Origin Pulse, which is nice. He's actually going to go into Swallow. Kind of surprised he didn't go into Kyurem right there, but uh, I'm thinking he scarfed at this point, and just I keep my Calgary around is really nice still, so I'm going to do it. And go into Samami's Boy right away, and we can't take that Boom Burst. Uh, like I said, the Ice Blue Crash from before is annoying because it, pretend, uh, depending on the roll, he could have knocked me out with that plus Boom Burst, so I wouldn't have ended up making this play. Uh, it would have made me probably go into Reuniclus, which still would have done a good amount, but I could have taken two. If I'm going to go into Kabutops right here, and now I can scare him out with the Rock move, I just click it right here, I knock out the Talent Flame, which is nice to get out of the way. Probably the least useful of his four, so I can understand that side completely. As he goes into Empoleon again, I still can't knock this thing out. As he gets fully parried right there, uh, I think he told me after the battle he was going for the Water move, uh, so I believe it was Scald, so as long as he didn't burn me, it would have taken me very low, and it ends up not really mattering. But right here, I can just click high jump kick and I'm gonna be able to knock him out um, I know from before that his swallow is choice scarf so it can't knock me out with any one move and right here I am basically just sacking off my Kyurem because I can reset the rain and let Kabutops come back out and uh, win this game because Kabutops still 
well, not Kabutops, but I'm going to, the plan would be if he outspeeds me right here and goes for the Sub-Zero Slammer or even Ice Move and knocks me out, then I go into um, Kyogre, reset the rain, um, put off as much damage as I can to this thing with the Ice Move or Ice Beam, and until he either knocks me out or I knock him out, and then I can send in uh, Kabutops to finish this thing off. If Swellow kills off Kabutops, then Reuniclus can win against the Swellow late game. Uh, right here, uh, he actually has no speed EVs in his Karam, which is interesting, but uh, I think he had a really bulky set to take on Kyogre more, which I don't understand why he didn't go Kyogre earlier, but nonetheless, uh, we are able to live the Boom Burst in the end because I knew a Scarf with uh, Hitmonlee, and Hitmonlee picks up three kills to end the week out, so really nice there. And um, we are able to win this game 4-0 and improve our record to, I believe, we are 5-1 plus 17 for the season. And um, yeah, overall GG to um, Lunar. Pretty fun game in general. Uh, hit my lead, definitely put in some work. And um, next week, guys, we are going up against Tsumami and his uh, Seattle Salamid. So he is 5 and 1 currently. He is in second place right behind me. So this is a huge game coming up. And I would definitely love to pull it off as it would give me a little bit of a cushion, even though this the, it's pretty tight up at the top right now, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, I believe, sketches 5 and 1 now. Uh, Tsumami did beat Easy last this week. So that moved Easy down to 4 and 2. Uh, but there's still three 5 and 1 teams moving into the next week with, I believe, two 4 and 2 teams. And it, it's pretty tight, so. And coming into playoffs, uh, seedings are going to be pretty, well, not amazingly important, but they're going to be uh, pretty cool to see who can pull out on top. Uh, but, anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and uh, feel free to leave a like. I really would appreciate it once again. And, uh, yeah, if you can want to leave any comments down below uh, recommending uh, why I made a certain play and, like, what scenario or whatnot, but. Uh, yeah, you guys also should get another episode of the Soul Link today. Uh, usually, we're going to try to take off Sundays and whatnot, but other than that, we're going to uh, try to upload every day, so that's, that's nice there. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that's going to be it for me, guys, and peace.